finally, let's deal with a slightly more complex molecule where we have more than one chiral center, but we want to turn this into a Fischer projection. Now, just based on looking at this, we know the general form will be you'll have your horizontal or your verticals. We're going to have three crosses to represent three chiral centers. But we have to do some work to get this to where you can actually um, put those groups accurately onto the Fisher projection. So the first thing is if you have a zigzag structure, you're going to have to convert it into a semi-cyclic type structure. So here's a zigzag. I actually need to rotate both of those bonds upward. So that it's semi-cyclic. The reason for that is, you know, if I'm looking at this from this direction, it doesn't matter which of these carbons I look at, away from me, the viewer, these bonds are pointed away. If you look anywhere along this, and that's what you need for a Fisher projection because those vertical bonds have to be pointed away from you. So that's what we need to do here. Here's our main backbone. Okay, and we need to rotate. I'll do it one step at a time. First, let's rotate this fennel up into the plane. Because as a viewer, basically I'm thinking of looking at this from down here. So I want all of these um, bonds, it's part of the main zigzag, pointed away from me, the viewer. So I'm going to rotate this one up. And when I do that, this whole right portion of the molecule is going to remain unchanged. This fennel is now pointed up, and by doing that 180 degree rotation, that OH gets rotated from the front down into the back. So here still, my chain. Now I need to do another rotation for this carbon. So now I'm going to rotate that methyl up. And when I do that, I'm going to keep everything on the left in the same place. I get that methyl pointed up here. But doing that 180 degree rotation moves that bromine from back out. Okay, as a viewer, I'm still looking here in this direction. I'm about ready to assemble my Fisher projection. I am going to draw in the hydrogens at these chiral centers just to help me keep track of things. Okay, and I'm looking at this so that the fennels on the top and the methyls on the bottom. But that's just the way I chose to look at this to be the top. So if that's the case, I'm laying here under this molecule. The fennel's up by my head, the methyl's down by my feet. If you're laying on the page like that, your left arm's going into the page, your right arm's coming out of the page. Okay, so here's a molecular model of this. I'm using the silver ball as the fennel group. Then we have our CH 
with the OH pointed out towards you. It's the OH here. We have our next CH with the green chlorine pointed back. Our next CH with the bromine, that's the purple ball, that's pointed back. And then our CH3. So what I've done here is, you know, in the first step, I rotated this phenyl group up like that. Okay, and that brought the H out and the OH back. And then I rotated this methyl group up in the second step. And that rotation brought that bromine out to the front. Now you can see how this main chain is in this pseudocyclic form. Why is that useful in terms of the Fischer projection? Well, we're looking at this from the bottom. So think of being down there, laying there looking up at this. If that's the case, and we switch our perspective, in this form, it doesn't matter you know, where you're looking at. If you look along any of these carbons, the vertical bonds are away from you. The horizontal bonds are pointed towards you all the way along if you look at this. So that's why this fulfills the definition of the Fischer projection because you know if you look from that bottom side all of these groups are in the right orientation. So then to draw the Fischer projection you just kind of think about you know flattening this out. From here things are fairly straightforward. We just translate this into the Fischer projection. At the top, by my head's the phenyl group. All right, then down here at the very bottom is the CH3. And then I have my three chiral centers, so that's going to be three crosses. And then you just need to line up you know, on this first carbon near the top, the OH is on the left. The chlorine's on the left, on the second carbon. And then the hydrogen is on the left, on the bottom carbon. And then for the right, those are your out groups because your right arm's pointed out. So on the top carbon, the hydrogen's on the right, the middle carbon, the hydrogen's on the right, and the bottom carbon, the bromine's on the right. So if you follow this careful procedure, you can get any molecule translated into a correct Fischer projection.